The lives of the saints are holy testimonies of the miraculous power of our Lord Jesus Christ. In reality, they are the testimonies of the Acts of the Apostles, only continued throughout the ages. The saints are nothing other than holy witnesses, like the holy apostles who were the first witnesses. Of what? Of the God-man Jesus Christ. Of Him crucified, resurrected, ascended into heaven and eternally alive. About His all-saving gospel, which is unceasingly written with evangelical holy deeds from generation to generation. For the Lord Christ, who is always the same, constantly works miracles by His divine power through His holy witnesses. The holy apostles are the first holy witnesses of the Lord Christ and His divine human economy of the salvation of the world. And their lives are living in immortal testimonies of the gospel of the Savior as the new life the life of grace, holy, divine, divine human, and therefore always miraculous, miraculous and true as the Savior's life itself is miraculous and true. And who are the Christians? Christians are those whom through the holy divine human life of Christ is continued from generation to generation until the end of the world and of time, and they all make up one body, the body of Christ the church. They are sharers of the body of Christ and members of one another. The stream of immortal divine life began to flow and still flows unceasingly from the Lord Christ, and through Him Christians flow into eternal life. Christians are the gospel of Christ continued throughout all the ages of the race of men. In the lives of the saints, everything is ordinary as in the Holy Gospel but everything is extraordinary as in the Holy Gospel, both one and the other, uniquely true and real. And everything is true and real by the same divine human reality, and the same holy power, divine and human, bears witness to it, divine in an all-perfect way, and human also in an all-perfect way. What are the lives of the saints? Behold, We are in heaven, for earth becomes heaven through the saints of God. Behold, we are among angels in the flesh, among Christ bearers. And whoever they are, the Lord is completely in them, and with them, and among them. And there is the whole eternal divine truth, and the whole eternal divine righteousness, and the whole eternal divine love, and the whole eternal divine life. What are the lives of the saints? Behold, we are in paradise, in which everything which is divine, holy, immortal, eternal, righteous, true, and evangelical grows and increases. For by the cross in every one of the saints the tree of eternal, divine, immortal life blossomed and brought forth much fruit. And the cross leads to heaven. It leads even us after the thief, who for our encouragement entered paradise first after the all-holy divine cross-bearer, the Lord Christ, and entered with a cross of repentance. What are the lives of the saints? Behold, we are in eternity. No longer is there time, for in the saints of God eternal divine truth, eternal divine righteousness, eternal divine love, eternal divine life reign and rule. And in them there is no longer any death, for their entire being is filled with the resurrecting divine energies of the risen Lord Christ, the only vanquisher of death, of all deaths in all worlds. There is no death in them. In holy people, their whole being is filled with the only immortal one, the all-immortal one, the Lord and God Jesus Christ. Among them, we are on earth among the only true immortals. They have conquered all deaths, all sins, all passions, all demons, all hells. When we are with them, no death can harm us, for they are the lightning rods of death. There is no thunderbolt with which death can strike us when we are with them, among them, in them. Saints are people who live on earth by holy, eternal, divine truths. That is why the lives of the saints are actually applied dogmatics, For in them all the holy eternal dogmatic truths 
are experienced in all their life-creating and creative energies. In the lives of the saints, it is most evidently shown that dogmas are not only ontological truths in themselves and for themselves, but that each one of them is a wellspring of eternal life and a source of holy spirituality. According to the all-true gospel of the unique and irreplaceable Savior and Lord, my words are spirit and life, for each one pours out from itself saving, sanctifying, a life-creating, transfiguring power. Without the holy truth of the Holy Trinity, we have none of that power from the Holy Trinity on which we draw by faith and which vivifies, sanctifies, deifies, and saves us. Without the holy truth about the God-man, there is no salvation for man, for from it, when it is lived by man, wells forth the saving power which saves from sin, death, the devil. And this holy truth about the God-man, do not the lives of countless saints most evidently and experimentally bear witness to it? For the saints are saints by the very fact that they constantly live the entire Lord Jesus as the soul of their soul, as the conscience of their conscience, as the mind of their mind, as the being of their being, as the life of their life. And each one of them together with the holy apostle loudly proclaims the truth, yet not I live, but Christ liveth in me. Delve into the lives of the saints. From all of them wells forth the grace-filled, life-creating, and saving power of the Most Holy Theotokos, who leads them from podvig to podvig, from virtue to virtue, from victory over sin to victory over death, from victory over death to victory over the devil, and leads them up into spiritual joy, beyond which there is no sadness, nor sighing, nor sorrow, but rather everything is only joy and peace in the Holy Spirit joy and peace from the victory obtained over all sins, over all passions, over all deaths, over all evil spirits. And all this, without a doubt, is the practical and living testimony to the holy dogma concerning the most holy Theotokos, truly more honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, the holy dogma which the saints by faith carry in their hearts and by which they live with zealous love. Again, if you want one, two, or thousands of irrefutable testimonies of the life-bearing and life-creating nature of the all-venerable cross of the Lord, and with it an experimental confirmation of the all-truthfulness of the holy dogma of the saving nature of the death of the Savior on the cross, then start out with faith through the lives of the saints and you will have to feel and see that to each saint individually, and to all the saints together, the power of the cross is the all-vanquishing weapon with which they conquer all visible and invisible enemies of their salvation. Furthermore, you will behold the cross in all their being, in their soul, in their heart, in their conscience, in their mind, in their will, and in their body, and in each one of them, you will find an inexhaustible wellspring of the saving, all-sanctifying power which unfailingly leads them from perfection to perfection and from joy to joy until finally it leads them into the eternal, heavenly kingdom where there is the unceasing triumph of those who keep festival and the infinite delight of those who behold the ineffable beauty of the face of the Lord." But not only these aforementioned dogmas are witnessed by the lives of the saints, but all the other holy dogmas of the Church, of grace, of the holy mysteries, of the holy virtues, of man, of sin, of the holy relics, of the holy icons, of life beyond the grave, and of everything else which makes up the divine human economy of salvation. Yes, the lives of the saints are experimental dogmatics. Yes, the lives of the saints are experienced dogmatics, experienced by the holy life of the holy people of God. In addition, the lives of the saints contain in themselves orthodox ethics in their entirety, orthodox morality, in the full radiance of its divine human sublimity 
and its immortal, life-creating nature. In them is shown and proven in a most convincing manner that the holy mysteries are the source of the holy virtues, that the holy virtues are the fruit of the holy mysteries. They are born of them. They develop by their help. They are nourished by them. They live by them. They are perfected by them. They become immortal by them. They live eternally by them. All the divine moral laws have their source in the holy mysteries and are realized in the holy virtues. For this reason, the lives of the saints are indeed experiential ethics, applied ethics. Actually, the lives of the saints prove irrefutably that ethics is nothing other than applied dogmatics. The entire life of the saints consists of the holy mysteries and the holy virtues, and the holy mysteries and the holy virtues are gifts of the Holy Spirit who accomplishes all in all.